Hi everyone, it's the English Simmer here, and if you are anything like me, you may think I have played The Sims 4 into the ground. This game has been out for almost a decade, which is absolutely wild to say. We've been through a panny D in that time, and I feel like a lot of people got back into The Sims 4, we were playing it almost every day, I personally play it almost every day of my life, and sometimes I just sit there and think, what have I I actually never done in The Sims 4? And it's a really, really hard question to answer. There's only a couple of things which I might actually make another video on because I do think that would be interesting to actually sit down and think about things, but I think I've done pretty much all of it. So I took to my Twitter and I was like, I want to spice up my Sims 4 game. How about I ask everyone who follows me over on Twitter what challenges they've actually been up to within the game? It's one of my favorite things about The Sims being such a sandbox game is the fact that people can come up with limitations, they can create incredible storylines to weave into certain challenges. So one of the first ones that I was super, super interested in was this one here by Cheese Pizza, Enchanted Cottage Challenge. I'm gonna try and link all of these on my Tumblr if I can find links to them. It's Realm of Magic plus Cottage Living, you know I am already there. Two of my favorite packs. Anything honestly to make Realm of Magic more interesting to me, I'm like, sign me up. Like, I would personally love a Realm of Magic refresh. Do I think that's gonna happen? No. Do I think I could make it more interesting by intertwining with other packs? Absolutely. During this let's play, you'll have a spellcaster sim stumble along Henford on Bagley. Jeez, I feel like I stumbled my way through that sentence, where they will decide to plant some roots pun intended. During this challenge, you have a specific set of rules and goals, but you are free to alter them however you like. Move them into any house in Willow Creek. This will be their rental home. Okay. Long for this challenge, which you all know I've been doing the Nightmare Legacy challenge, which was a short lifespan legacy. So seeing long is a blessing to my eyeballs. Give me an eyeball ring because you basically just proposed to me. Stop by the magic realm, pick up a broom, familiar and wand. These are three items your sim will start the game with. Your sim will spend a minimum of one full day and night in two cities before they can head to Henford. Oh my word, so we're getting out and about and exploring. Then you can stumble upon Henford, you can meet the villagers before you can purchase land here and call it home. You have to meet Agatha, Agnes, Kim, Sarah and one of the grocery deliverers. Meet and become friends with the mayor? Oh my word! Lavinia never wants to be my friend. Friend. Can I just say, I'm loving the absolute depth. Build a cottage of your sim's dream, live off the land, ditch that corporate nine to five, earn all your money without being employed, become virtuoso, become Finchwick champion. If you've wanted to explore Realm of Magic and cottage living way more in depth and actually have personalization, do this one. This sounds like a perfect challenge for me. At Tiptoe Sims replied with N-I-S-B-I. Now, I am used to seeing I'm surrounded by idiots. I don't know what the N stands for, so I'm intrigued, Jordan. Can you tell that I've been slightly rewatching? I was about to say Willow Creek, Shit's Creek. I feel like I'm very much giving Alexis. Nightmare challenge, you know I love a nightmare. Oh, so it's combining the short lifespan legacy and Simcelia's I'm surrounded by idiots challenge. So this is a sort of legacy, but it does give a spin on a legacy, so. Let's take it with a pinch of salt. Survive 10 generations on short lifespan whilst only controlling one sim at a time known as the torch holder. <gasps> Wait, why do I now kind of want to do that just for like one generation of my short lifespan legacy? That sounds so fun. That's basically the premise of I'm Surrounded by Idiots is that you can only control like the one sim that you choose to control for the rest of their life. For an optional difficulty adjustment, disallow the hand of God, aka you can't click and drag items such as dirty dishes or inventory items. Disallow service sims, you're not allowed to hire a nanny repairman. <laughs> 
I threw all of those out of the window in my short lifespan legacy. This sounds like hell and I do feel like I would be yelling I'm surrounded by idiots at any given opportunity. Oh my word, can I just say I did quickly have a look at this one and D. First of all, Dee is one of my favorite people on the planet. I absolutely love Dee. As a human, as a simmer, like literally just everything about Dee is just beautiful. But Sandra actually pointed out that Dee had created a challenge called the Bloomful Challenge. I'm fairly sure Dee has probably done this either over on her Twitch or over on her YouTube channel. So I am gonna link Dee. You start on a rundown abandoned farm. Again, sign me up for the cottage core. You know I am a woman loving woman. It's truly the gay agenda to run off to a farm and just live your life, you know? So I'm here for this already. Limited access to the land and even rooms in your house. So this basically starts out again with nothing and you have to build up your life and you have to do certain goals to actually even add things onto your house, which I just think is such a sick concept. The required packs are actually cottage living, get to work and vampires. That sounds like the start of a bad joke. Three Sims packs walk into a bar and it's those three. D has quite literally created it for you. Oh my word, that is incredible. So you do start with like a plot of land and then to then remove the grass and foliage, it costs all of these amounts of simoleons. Some of them have to be completed in order in harm mode. So to repair the cracks and the floors, you have to pay a thousand per room, 500 for bathrooms. This is just, again, exploring like those packs so in depth. And I'm so, so glad that Cottage Living, it's getting its moment. I do kind of wish that people tied Eco Lifestyle in with it more, because I will say Eco Lifestyle and Cottage Living go so perfectly together in my mind. It's kind of like Stardew, but in The Sims 4. Egg Babe, absolutely out here promoting her own hard work. So thank you so much, Egg. It's called the Odd Money Challenge. Every generation makes money with a skill object instead of a career. It's super customizable, base game friendly, and I'm working on bonus gens right now. You know I absolutely loved base game and like the hobbies that came with it when it first came out. I didn't love base game as like a whole. I was excited for it. I was excited to explore a new generation of The Sims. And I do think that like the hobbies that you can make money from in The Sims 4 are really fun to explore. And I will consistently go back to them even after like its 10 year lifespan. So the basic premise of this challenge is that each heirs, so again, it's kind of a legacy. You all tricked me. You're all like, I'm just not gonna put legacy in the title and then Molly will read it. Which is fair, because I do think some legacy challenges are really fun, especially when people put their own twists on it and it's not a super well-known one. But I personally can get a little bit bored of legacy challenges, but I guess when it's something like this that gives my mind like focus, I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, you know what? This still sounds like fun and I'm here for it. Generations number one is stealing. I'm in. You know what? Hook, line and sinker, you got me. In this house, we do not stand corporations. Down with the 1%. Personality, your sim has to be a kleptomaniac. Aspiration chief of mischief, quirk. Your sim is starting out with nothing, including clothing. Start your sim with only one basic outfit per category and use the style of sims you steal from around to create additional outfits. Oh my god, you best believe I am stealing from the land grab straight away. Right, what's the very Variations. Each gen has its primary method of making money. So number one is stealing from public lots. That makes more sense in my brain now that I've actually read it. Any of you doing your GCSEs right now might be watching this video. Make sure you read your questions thoroughly before you start writing. Each gen follows rags to riches style, meaning your founder starts with zero simoleons, music to my ears. Each heir moves out with no money at the beginning of each generation. Ooh. Uh, Egg was not messing around. Then we have carpentry, which justice for the woodworking table. Fishing, tips and licensing music, frog breeding, videos from Get Famous and ranching cottage living, potions, realm of magic, beachcombing island living. And then these are base game replacements. So even if you don't have those specific packs, you can do painting, comedy, love to con, ghost everyone you get a loan from, talk ghosting literally, kill everyone you get a loan 
loan from. Surely the sims you borrow from will be looking for it to be repaid. Sneakiness is key. Your sim must avoid the sims they've taken loans from at all costs. Incredible. I can personally get behind a legacy challenge when it means being mean to other sims. Kate with the globe trotter challenge. I have literally never ever heard of this challenge so I'm really excited for this. After a couple of years of lockdowns and travel restrictions I was in desperate need to go traveling so I played this instead. This is by Moonfee. Your sim is an adventurer visiting many places around the globe. Meant to be played with one sim and the following pack. Seasons, island living, eco lifestyle, snowy escape, outdoor retreat. Okay, there's a bunch of them. This challenge is not about accumulating money, but enjoying the gameplay. Let me dive in deep to gameplay. Usually each round has its own main and secondary aspirations to fulfill. It's best to turn aging off or set it to long. So this isn't a legacy challenge. You're only meant to play with one sim on like a long lifespan and get them out to see as many of the sims worlds as possible. Give them a 10 and set the funds to zero to 50 simoleons. So they are like a true traveler. Main aspirations must be completed during their round. Secondary aspirations must be completed at least halfway before moving to a new location. Your sim cannot travel to places outside of the world. Wow! Super immersive in like where you currently are. They can apply for a part-time job once they have a tent, a campfire, a fridge, a bush, or a toilet, a shower, a sink, a counter, a chair. They must quit their job when you move to the next location. Your sim can make money by selling things they found and created from their inventory or on prop. Plopsy. So you start in Mount Komarebi in summer, make a living by selling fruits and vegetables, fish or knits, and go sightseeing. Aspirations to complete are Mount Komarebi sightseer and then leader of the knits. Round two is Sulani in winter. I love how you have like seasons to work with as well, so it really does feel like you are globe trotting. Having spent the summer and fall in Mount Komarebi, your sim sets out for Sulani for the winter. They just want to chill, run away from the storm, and sink their toes into the ocean. An aspiration to complete is just beach life. Strangerville in spring after relaxing in the sun and avoiding getting hit by lightning. <laughs> those tropical storms, am I right? Your sim travels to Granite Falls but gets lost on the way and finds themselves in a strange place where they have to... You have to beat the Strangerville mystery, mother plant, I am coming for you. Then spring, summer, your sim finally makes it to Granite Falls. They wish to admire nature, study herbalism, and go hiking. I have to do this. Literally fell in love. This feels like a summer romance in The Sims 4, and I'm so here for it. The things that you could do, like, imagine the romances you could have and then you could break a sim's heart and be like, oh, I have to go my own way. I have to live my own life. I still am exploring to find who I am. The drama. Again, this one's a little bit of a legacy, but I was like, I'm gonna make an exception because I do feel like this is very, very good for people who feel as if they have explored everything in the game or maybe you're just recently getting into The Sims and you do feel overwhelmed by everything on offer, everything everywhere, all at once, you know? Hannah Ello actually put, I'm playing my own made up legacy called the one pack per generation challenge. I disable all the packs, which you can actually do within The Sims. It's just an option on Origin. James Turner actually created a pack disabler so you can just click on the packs that you wanna get rid of, input that code into your origin and it will disable them. And I add one back by release date. I created this challenge because I was overwhelmed with all the packs that we have. I wanna experience everything. So this is kind of a leprosy, I guess, which is kind of exploring every pack that you get like each generation. Would pretty much start with outdoor retreat, gain the herbalism skill, maybe try and capture all of the animals if you can, get all of the gardening things that you can get in outdoor outdoor retreat, meet the hermit, do everything that you need to do in Granite Falls. And then you go on to install, what would be the next one? Get to work. And then you maybe do all of the careers of get to work, add another one in, beautiful, simple, peaceful. It'll take 62 generations. Nah, that's not peaceful. I'm out. I quit. Again, this one is a little bit more low key, a little bit more chill. So thank you, Zay. Right now I have the lifespan set to long and I'm trying to do every aspiration for the entire family. If you know me, if you've been watching my channel back throughout the pandemic, actually, I was trying to get every trophy in The Sims 4 on PlayStation. It's the only game that I've ever platinumed on PlayStation. And this is kind of the same 
same thing and it's just trying to do every aspiration that you have in your game within one family which I think is very fun. I have not checked this one out whatsoever but it does look interesting so thank you googling googler. I saw this one which I fancy doing at some point. Looks good. The inherited mana challenge. You can actually get all of the build as well. After an unforeseen life event left you homeless, alone and penniless you are forced to seek help of your eccentric grandmother. Love it already. Delighted with your tech she offers you the family mana on one condition. You must save it. This is like stardew. I love our ancestors putting stuff on us that we didn't even know existed. Somehow news of this arrangement reaches your cousin who in a fit of rage trashes the place and nearly burns your grandmother alive the drama. Your grandma hides 500 simoleons and the keys in the mailbox as she makes her escape. Start with one young adult and 500 simoleons. You work through the rooms in any order but you must complete each one before moving to the next. If you start in the kitchen you must finish the kitchen before moving on to the dining room. It's considered complete when the mess is cleaned, appliances are repaired, furniture restored or replaced. Once you restore an item you can replace it with a new version of the same item. Every room you finish earns one one randomly chosen remove lot challenge. For each floor you complete you can add one lot trait of your choosing. Once you complete a floor you can remodel it and sell the original items. This is so... how do people come up with these? I mean I wouldn't like this responsibility in real life but give me this responsibility in my sims game? Absolutely. She's gonna get tired of me tagging her but Alexis made my sims a legacy challenge. Again I know another legacy but it's my sims. Can you you blame me. I bloody love my sims. It's hands down one of my favourite parts of the sims franchise as a whole. It holds a special place in my heart. I love those little feckin dudes that you can find in the time capsules. I love this game as a kid and I do wish that they would remake it for the Switch, you know. I would want it so badly. I am its biggest supporter. Sims team, if anyone's watching, you know I go on about it all of the time. Also, this is still being worked on in 2023, which I absolutely love. Master the culinary career and complete the master chef aspiration. Own a five-star restaurant. You do not need to keep this after generation is complete. Optional university add-on. Attend university and receive the culinary arts degree. I just love how people are like, oh, you want to make your life harder? I got you, babe. Foody, clumsy, gloomy. Oh, Gino! Is Gino gloomy? And then you need to focus on cooking, gourmet cooking, and then for extra, if you want to, you can do mixology, and if you have get to work, you can do baking. Complete experimental food prints collection and learn their recipes. Unlock the 27 city living recipes. That is so much, but I kind of love it. Oh my god, DJ Candy. Complete the party animal aspiration. You can attend university and get the fine arts degree if you want to. Music lover, dance machine, bro. Aspiration is obviously party animal. Live off royalties from published songs and lyrics. DJ mixing, dancing and then one other instrumental or vocal skill. And if you have Get Famous you can do the extra media production. Oh my god Hopper! I'm assuming. Oh I thought this was just gonna be frogs. I mean frogs are in there that you can do as a collection. Skills, cross stitch and herbalism. Oh my god yes Hopper is the generation for me. I don't want to spoil all of this because this genuinely might be like an off-screen thing for me. But there we have it. Those are all of your suggestions for not as well-known challenges. Yes, I know some of them were legacy challenges. You don't have to make them legacies if you don't want to. You could just randomly start a save file of like one generation in particular. Focus on that and then you could completely forget about it. You could come back to it in a year or two and be like, oh yeah, that was like my My Sims thing. How about I just pick another random generation or like even just a set of goals to complete. You don't actually even have to view it as a generation and I think that very much helps especially for me as someone who does get slightly overwhelmed and also is like oh I have to play the same family for like 10 generations that's gonna be so boring but I have to say I am living the short lifespan legacy because I do feel like the sped up version definitely helps. But let me know what you think about all of these. Like I said the 
there will be a post in the description where I will link to every single one of these, be it just a tweet to remind you, or be it the actual rules that are written by the creators. Thank you to every single person who replied to that tweet. Thank you to every single creator who has ever made a challenge in The Sims 4. I absolutely bloody adore your creativity. Please absolutely keep at it, keep on it. You are what keeps the game feeling fresh and fun for me personally and a bunch of other people, as you can tell. The amount of bookmarks I had on that thread was so, so wholesome. People just want to uplift creators in The Sims community and it's one of my favourite things about being part of this community. So thank you all so much for tuning in. If there's anything that you feel I should check out, any challenges that you may not have seen other people do, leave them in the comments down below. You can tell that I am passionate about this. At least I hope you can. Let me know if there's any of these that you may have never heard of and you're like, you know what, I'm actually going to go and start that right now. I appreciate you all so, so much. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you aren't already and I will speak to you all in my next one. Bye now.